everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. This is episode three in the Self Care with Essential Oil series. And joining me live, we have Angelique Binet and Patty Tin Holt, my two essential oil experts. How to honor your pregnancy with self care, um, have the right mindset and looking after yourself and bump and which ones are the best for specific pregnancy symptoms. We're also going to cover how to use the essential oils during labor and during birth so that you're able to maintain that nice calmness so that you can focus on what you need to be getting on with. Stick around to the end because Patty will be revealing how she halved her postnatal bleeding and then you can download the PDF guide to this series. So we're going to start with that first point you mentioned. It's that mindset of honoring your pregnancy and bump and taking care of yourself. First, I think it's really important, and I've been there, had a, a boy, he's 11, but I remember my pregnancy, and I remember that I hated those magazines that shows happy happy mamas pregnant and smiling. <laughs> I was not smiling at all. And I wish at the time that I could have known more about essential oils. But what I did at the time is I reach out to more natural way of getting better and I use acupuncture. That was, and um, what is the name of that therapy that goes on your feet? Reflexology. Oh, reflexology, yes. yes. So, so that, that was, you know, a choice that I made. Like, I don't want to take any tablets or anything. I want to find a way to go through that pain that is a happy pain because I was supposed to have a baby, so I'm supposed to be happy. And how can I use, you know, natural ways of um, going through that with the less, you know, depression because it's kind of depressing to be pregnant and be like feeling so bad it's very hard a lot of people suffer with that yeah yeah and so uh i think in terms of mindset there is yourself that you need to talk to yourself but the other thing is that how people look at you they they think you're pregnant so you should be happy right that's in people's perception most of the time and that was just pissing me off a lot Mm -hmm. and so you have to be strong in terms of well I'm not feeling that great, but I'm doing everything to feel better. And yes, I'm going to go to, uh, you know, any therapy, natural therapy that could help me to feel better and be very strong about it and, and not being scared of being judged by your family or your friends who think that you're crazy and you're going to be at risk and stuff like that. So I had to go through that, but it helped me a lot to, to have a, a good partner who was supportive of me. So that's another thing, like you have to have a good discussion with your partner mm. uh, so that's just to be ready to do whatever you can do in with your means in terms of time you need to put the time to take care of yourself you need to convince yourself that yes you need to feel the best as you can and then you need to reach out to the right people so you need to do your homework you need of course to read and ask yeah, many questions yeah. Sorry, we have kids around. <laughs> After a while, <laughs> uh, <laughs> they could play together. Um, so it's like mom life. <laughs> so it's really about the mindset that you need to be good to yourself and you'll be fine with you know being who you are and, and explain your friends and your family or or even if you don't want to explain to them, just to be okay with the fact that you're going through a tough time. Uh, but you want to find natural ways to address it. That would be my recommendation. Absolutely. I think there's a lot that when you become pregnant, and I especially um, became much more aware of the nasties that exist in a lot of uh, chemical products, the kind of things you want to avoid, and uh, looking for natural solutions, I think, is, is, is essential. What are your recommendations in use of essential oils for pregnancy specific self-care when it comes to the symptoms the really horrible nausea that you get for example you want to make sure that you're choosing the highest quality possible in your essential oils and we talked before about what some of the the red flags would be in using inferior essential oils and why you shouldn't do that and just be cautious about the amount that you're using but for me I'm going to say that's no different from life when you're not pregnant so always we say a drop is a dose and always we're going to dilute so you're going to do your drop of essential oil in your hand just like that can you see <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, right? And then you drop of coconut oil and just rub your hands together when you're in that before you're applying it to wherever you want to apply. So Angelis could just put it on her neck, but no matter where you were applying your essential oil, so you're going to dilute it. 
and you're going to always stick with a single drop as a dose, okay? So that's exactly the same pregnant or not pregnant. One of the first symptoms of pregnancy, of course, is nausea and fatigue. So those are things that we can actually deal with together really, really easily. And my solution for that would be a drop of peppermint and a drop of orange. And you would do a drop of each in the palm of your hand with some coconut oil, rub it on your, on your abdomen, like where your heartburn is or on your stomach. Um, and then inhale, big, deep breaths, right? It's opening the airways and it's going to go on the back of the neck as well. Now that can also be the solution for edema. So later in the pregnancy, when you've got the swelling, right? Sore ankles and swelling, any kind of edema, same solution, the orange and the peppermint and just apply it topically. So very, very simple solutions for that. And it works for the energy, boosting the energy with the orange and the peppermint because it's invigorating as well as working with edema, as well as working with your digestive system use it as often as you need to to have um to have a relief of symptoms in that case what about stretch marks avoiding them or if you already have some that are starting to show is it too late or can we start doing something already yeah. So the stretch marks happen, right? Because the skin is elastic, but sometimes it's becoming stretched so quickly that the elasticity isn't strong enough to prevent the stretch marks from happening. So to prevent stretch marks, if it's a first pregnancy and or even you know beyond first pregnancy, but you were lucky enough to not get any the first time, my first thing would be to say myrrh essential oil. Now myrrh is not a super common one, but a really, really high energy essential oil, gentle, but with powerful properties. So what I would do with that is exactly how we use that oil a minute ago with Angelique. You're just going to put the drop in your hand, a couple drops of coconut oil. And this is actually where you could even use virgin coconut oil, because what you're going to do is just rub it onto your belly, onto your breast tissue, onto your arms, right? Anywhere where stretch marks are a possibility. And I'll tell you just during my, it was my fifth pregnancy it was three years ago and I had this fur on my belly every single day it was just it was almost like a little bonding moment too with the baby where I was just massaging my skin and talking to the baby and yeah, great whilst you're doing your meditations all that is like is that time for you yeah and even as far as itchiness goes, it because even that skin stretching can become itchy, even if you don't get stretch marks, right? The itchiness of it just growing and growing and growing, the myrrh is amazing for that. And it makes your skin just absolutely gorgeous. You could even use that on your face. It's completely good for your skin. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Oh, oh, did you experience any itching or stretch marks yourself during pregnancy? Yeah, but I was using, a, I was using coconut for my belly uh, like three times a day yeah. like at night and then uh, when it was itchy and in the morning and yeah. I was lucky enough I just have one one stretch left but I had just one kid so <laughs> <laughs> I know but I know it helps and then it, it, it's relaxing super it relaxing yeah. super relaxing I think it's great and I would advise doing it even if you think you're not getting any at the beginning. I thought I would be spared because my mother was, and I didn't really do anything until a roadmap appeared on my belly. I hadn't noticed because I was always looking down, and then one day I was looking at in, through the mirror, I realized the underbelly was just like a, a roadmap of uh, stretch marks, and that's when uh, that's when I started um, uh, using some. But I should have started before, and I think preventative measures is better you're really increasing the elasticity of the of the skin and even oh, wow. and then it also helps your skin to recover right to come back afterwards instead of being all stretched out you can keep using it right after the pregnancy as well um but like it's just it's so good for skin connective tissue regenerative tissue it's just super good for you and pregnancy is the time to take those extra steps just a minute or two a day to do the things that make you feel really good right and and that myrrh oil is just such a gorgeous, I want to say it's a mellow aroma. It's just soft and um, and fresh and it just, it makes you feel so, so good. So I would definitely recommend doing that throughout. 
pregnancy. Is it safe to use that essential oil on uh, the genital area? Because if you're doing perineal massage uh, in in preparation for birth and you are massaging not on the inside but on the outside and you're just trying to get a little bit more elasticity and gets that more moisture into that area, which which also can be very relaxing when there's tension buildup and your your ligaments are are becoming more strained. Is it safe to use it with the coconut oil and the essential oil together? Although my first choice uh, for perineum massage would be frankincense. So again, you'd be using okay. oil. So you'd take maybe even say a tablespoon of coconut oil and just add a few drops of frankincense to it. You just need a very, very tiny amount on very tender tissue, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then use that for, for the massage. And then, um, yeah, the frankincense is so, so good for cellular support, right? And so it's going to really help and support that area. But then after the birth as well, and I know we're going to talk more about this, but frankincense. Yes, we'll follow that tomorrow. So it's just, it's not, I mean, it's a fairly expensive essential oil, but it's not one that you'd only use one or two drops out of the bottle and then say, oh, well, what do I do with this? It's one that you're going to use forever for everything. And frankincense was the most amazing thing for me post-birth. I had a, a natural vaginal birth at home. And I just put would put a drop into the spray bottle and use it every single time I use the washroom. And just with water. Yes, with water and um, and just spray every time I use the washroom, and it was it was healed so 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 quickly. I want to add again that any any kind of problems that you have during pregnancy, even if just a cold or a sore neck or um, you know heartburn that happens, right? You can always choose essential oils for this, um, and just use it in small quantities as often as you need to to get relief. Um, I would add that there are a couple of essential oils that some people should avoid during pregnancy. So if you are having a high risk pregnancy, so at the beginning you have a high risk of miscarriage or towards the end you have a high risk of preterm labor where it could be dangerous for you or for your baby. Um, So there are some essential oils then that you would mostly avoid. So one would be oregano. Oregano is a super, super powerful essential oil. Um, And you would never use it directly on your skin without using coconut oil because it can really irritate your skin, even people who don't have sensitive skin. Mm -hmm. danger for it during pregnancy is that in some women, it can stimulate um, bleeding from the uterus, which of course you do not want during pregnancy. So it doesn't necessarily mean miscarriage, but you don't want bleeding of any kind when you're pregnant. No, so, you just don't want to take that risk. Exactly. So for some women, now I will say that I did not have in any way a high risk pregnancy and I was already an essential oils user before I became pregnant. And so I did use oregano a few times while I was pregnant and I did it without I felt any risk to me. Um, But for a woman who is considering herself to be having any kind of risk in her pregnancy, either for miscarriage or preterm labor, simply avoid uh, oregano. That's one for sure that you would avoid. Okay. Okay. Anything else to note or anything else that we want to be cautious about? Um, So the other thing that you'll see warnings online about is the use of clary sage. Now, um, in our second part of the series, I did talk about using clary sage um, before pregnancy to uh, to support a, a healthy menstrual cycle, right? Yes. Um, and that's absolutely fine to do. And then when you once you find out you're pregnant, you can stop using it. it it's not going to cause you to have a miscarriage. It's it's you could never blame it on clary sage. However, in some women. If they were already having some uterine contractions, even very early on, like in the, you know, in, in the early days when a miscarriage is possible, the clary sage could strengthen those contractions. So if they were likely to have a miscarriage, the clary sage could encourage that to happen. Not necessarily, but in some women. So that's one that you typically wouldn't use during pregnancy, right? Um, once you know you're pregnant, stop using it. 
Now that said, at the end of pregnancy, right, when you are ready, like it is 40 weeks and you are ready to meet your baby, okay, at that time, when you start to feel early labor contractions coming on, you can use the clary sage to strengthen the contractions. Clary sage will not put you into labor. It does not have that level of power in your body, absolutely. But so so when, you're, when you're ready and you're already having contractions, everything right. is going well and you're ready to, to, to continue. So you're really yeah. getting... So, so say you've had a couple hours of mild contractions and then they stop. Okay, if you'd like to get it moving again, Clary Sage would be one that you would consider trying at that time. Okay, but you don't start using it like at 36 or 38 weeks. Like, okay, it's going to put me into labor. Like, that's not what's going to happen. But when your body is signaling to you that it's ready, that it's having early labor, then you can start using it to help to strengthen the contractions. Or if you know you're in labor and then it stalls, then you can use it to help you uh, mm. to help the contractions. That's fantastic. I would say also when you do, if you have to use it during, uh, during that stage, take that moment to just reflect on it, be mindful of where you are at in that stage of labor and recollect your thoughts. It's about thinking why is my labor stalling maybe it's because i'm getting a little bit more anxious there's maybe there's a lot of noise and distractions going on or a lot of people are talking to me so if you are being distracted and you feel find that you need to just go back into your cave a bit more and just say so i'm just going to do a bit of you know a little bit of treatment for myself and focus on that so it's bringing that attention your mind back into the zone and using uh the essential oils to help you do that yeah so a couple of things you can do when you're in labor to help you to stay calm and focused, right? Ideally, ahead of time, you will have identified some essential oils that the aroma is really pleasing to you, that you know it helps you to feel calm, relaxed. Maybe if you've practiced some meditation before your labor and then use the aroma of the essential oil within your meditation, then when you smell it again during your labor, it will take you back to that place of calm Absolutely. focus so, so you act like a very quick trigger yeah. yeah so for some women it could be something invigorating like orange or peppermint it could be something that really is good for your brain like frankincense or rosemary for some women it could just be something that's a beautiful aroma and actually one that many women are drawn to during labor is ylang ylang um, mm. It has a very, you know, floral, beautiful fragrance. And many women are drawn to that to just mm, breathe in, breathe out and just calm and, uh, and relax during that aroma. So that's something that your partner could massage into your shoulders during labor. Or if you don't want to be touched during labor, I was one of those people, mm -hmm. don't come near me, um, <laughs> right? Just holding that bottle under your nose for a minute. Right. You can just call for it. Oil. Right. And someone can just bring it for you to to inhale. And that can be really beneficial. Um, I also was one of those unlucky women who had back labor. Back labor, I describe as being in labor twice simultaneously because it's not about it's not bad enough what's going on in the front half of your body. The back half of your body has to do it all over again. Right. Simultaneously. It's pretty brittle. So anyway, I did find some relief using essential oils on my lower back as well. And for that, I would actually recommend frankincense. It has some analgesic properties as well as black pepper. Black pepper is warming. Um, it increases circulation in the area. And then that might seem like a contradiction, but then put an ice pack over top of that and you'll find it's extremely, extremely effective. Yeah. So for those who are unlucky with the back labor, all five freaking times, I tell you, it was pretty brutal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, not, right. But anyway, you want to just sort of have some of those things on hand and um, and they're, they're simple and easy to apply. Absolutely. Um, I will just give one more tip. 
about labor and birth. Again, as you know that you're nearing the end of a, of a healthy pregnancy and that, that labor is going to be coming on in the next two or three weeks or so, of course, it's always unpredictable, right? But you can kind of guess. Um, something that you might want to consider is using some essential oils preemptively to help reduce bleeding after the birth. And this was something that I was actually skeptical about, but I made myself up a little blend of essential oils it was actually the clary sage and some lavender and something called helichrysum, which is a very expensive essential oil, but really, really good for your blood and for circulation. And then cypress. Cypress is also super good for circulation. So I just made up a little blend like that and started applying it to, um, I guess, to my lower abdomen and along my thighs, right, sort of, um, and on my lower back. Uh, as a way of preventing excessive blood loss at, at the birth. And even at my birth, my midwife commented, even within moments after my baby was born, how little I was bleeding. And I will tell you, I had almost completely stopped bleeding three days after the birth. I bled for six weeks after my first birth and only about three days after my last. And I really credit it to the use of the essential oils to just effectively, I mean, you have a big open wound in your body after you give birth, right? Once the placenta is released. And so I really credit the essential oils with helping my body to heal from the trauma of the birth very quickly. I mean, and, and I know you're going to talk a lot more about that t in tomorrow's uh, episode to cover the whole postnatal recovery phase and safe use on baby. Now, I know that we're running short on time here because you guys have another class to get to. Uh, but we have a question on using essential oils. If you were having a water birth, um, either at home or uh, in a midwife-led center, but you're in... Uh, in a bath, a jacuzzi style tub, and you're filling the water up, is it safe to add some in to the water uh, during labor? Yeah, what I would probably do is have my partner, my caregiver, apply the essential oils to my body before for getting into the bath. So you want as much of it to absorb in, in a concentrated way where you want it, whether it's your shoulders or your lower back or the bottoms of your feet, whatever is working for you at that time. I would do that. I would personally be disinclined to put a lot of essential oils into the water. This is the water that your baby's going to be born into and then lifted out of. And I personally wouldn't, wouldn't want the essential oils to be on my baby's skin immediately at the birth. So, I mean, the, the oils will mostly float on top anyway, but the baby's going to come up out of the water. They're going to get some oils on them. And I personally just wouldn't do it. I would put the essential oils on my skin, not in the, in the water itself. And even if there is maybe a little bit from your skin that goes into the water, don't worry about it too much. When baby comes out, it's going to be covered in vernix and that white pasty stuff, which is it's its own water protection um like it looks like goose fat don't rub that stuff off you want right. to keep that on baby it's protecting his skin his or her skin um and yeah don't take that off that's just another tip use that as you would for your own essential oils and rub that into baby's skin don't get rid of it it's fantastic gold dust <laughs> can i add something in yes, um, please do because uh i had a doula you had a midwife but uh, if whoever is listening to do or with us today, like it's really important that if you go with essential oil or whatever you want to bring during birth, like you have to make sure that you talk about it with your midwife or you do that so like completely aware of where you're coming from yes. so that you don't have to question anything on the day right. of because there is no time for that. Absolutely. Having that in your birth plan as part of your birth plan is going to make it easier for your whole team for your partner who's applying which one's at which point for you so you don't have to talk too much you don't you don't want to go out of the zone you want to be focusing on yourself on baby and if that is already explained uh, with the ones and you're clearly labeling which ones you want to be using at which stage it's going to make your life a lot easier and if there are any other questions that people want answered then just leave it into the uh, comments box and we'll make sure that we answer all of that in the next episode but this has been fantastic thank you so much again for giving us your free time to give us all these amazing um, amazing tips